we played round by round, Gnome and Hold'em, PLO, and of course it changed it to just PLO. And that's just because the Hold'em players busted. We started at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We played until 5 this morning. I got home at like 5.30, somewhere around there. Sleep in until like noon to have a breakfast. It was a tough game, very tough. When you're in a game for $5,000 and you almost get unstuck, I ended up down 600 for the night, you basically feel like that's a win. To uh, a big session last night, 15 hours of poker, two bullets in this fucking $160 tournament, and I played so bad, so bad, I'm so tired. The first night I was here, we just played 2-5, two, 2 card poker, won 1,082. So up 1,082, down 600. So we're up 482 for the whole trip. So then there's this big tournament here in Green Bay. $160 buy-in. After playing PLO for 15 hours, I decided to switch to 2 card poker. And let me tell you, I was tired. I played like shit. Literally waited around for like an hour and a half, two hours for the cash game to start up. So I fired two bullets in the $160 buy-in bounty tournament with no bounties, so down 320. Then I play PLO. I'm in for 2200, out for 2500. Nope, 2480, pardon me. So we win 280 there, lose 320, down $40 for the whole day. The worst part, there's a blizzard. Six to eight inches. The roads are terrible, terrible, god awful. Can't even go faster than like 30, 40 miles an hour, like on Highway 41 going 40. This is just horrible. But it is what it is. This is the life of a grinder. It is not all glamor, everybody. Sometimes. You make a decision that I'm gonna stay and play in this really good game, and you end up for the whole day losing fifty dollars, and it, and then you're gonna get home. I'm gonna get home at like five o'clock in the morning. My whole day tomorrow is shot. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get home tonight because the snow is so bad. You know, one of the things that <clears throat> one of the things that I try to remind my students of all the time is that there is always more time to play poker. There is always more time. The Parliament Omaha game is always gonna be there. The 2040 at the Bellagio is always gonna be there. So why do we do things like this? Why do we risk like our lives driving through a blizzard just to play a game? You play to win the game. I don't know what to tell you guys. This was stupid. Yeah. Yeah. That's... <sighs> bad decisions sometimes make good stories, and sometimes bad decisions are just bad decisions. I got to play with the hippo today, and there was a hand situation when I went batter up to Nick, and the hippo requested that I put batter up in the vlog. There you have it, everybody. And it's kind of funny because um, my wife and I, when we bought this house, I had to take it all the way down to the studs, trusts, and joists. Uh, and so we redid the entire house. When I redid this bedroom, uh, I was just thinking about this because whenever you do photography or videos, lighting is important. But when we were running the electricity, my uh, my daughter requested that the light be a moon and it be at the end of the room. And I was just laughing because here I was like, you know, if we had a light in the middle here, I could angle the camera in any way I wanted to in this room. But this is like actually the best lighting is like being in the corner. Um, it just made me think of my daughter, that's all. So it's just funny because now... A little decision that I let a 14 year old have, you know, four years ago impacts what kind of lighting you guys see. I am just punting online. I don't even 
know like how to describe it. Like last night I lost like fourteen hundred dollars online at a little club that we play on. And you know, I didn't even lose like any huge pots. There wasn't like an eight hundred dollar pot that I lost or like a six hundred dollar pot that I lost. It wasn't like if I just had one pot that was different, it was literally like, oh, we're calling $15 or $20 to go to the flop or $15, whatever the case may be, to go to the flop. The flop, we would have enough equity to continue to see a turn when somebody does like a half pot size bet. And then when the turn like missed us and then they bet pot, we just fold. And it was like, watch, rinse and repeat, man. And when I was down in Green Bay this weekend, uh, the guy that I brought with, Pat, is a really good guy. He says, you know, sometimes when you're playing PLO, you're, you're the whack-a-mole, you know, and you're hitting every damn mole, and you're like, pot, 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 pot. And then he's like, and then some days, you're just the mole. Pot, 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 pot. <laughs> I tell you what. Woo. And uh, was literally one of the toughest PLO games I've played in a really long time. So those players who are at that game... Kudos and compliments to all of you because that was really one of the hardest games I've played in in a really long time. And I played some of my best poker in my life during that time and I lost $600. You know? It's just crazy when you think about it, isn't it, Rupert? You know, you think the life of a grinder. It's like, it's one of those things where... You can you could be performing really well at your profession. You could be doing amazingly well, and just for the small snapshot of time, be losing. Now, don't get me wrong. I everybody has leaks, myself included. Um, that's for sure. But right now, as I I was describing it to Donkfish. I said, you know, usually if you have a leak in the boat, if it's in the back and you're going as fast as you can forward, your boat's not gonna sink because the amount of water that comes into the boat gets expelled by the speed of your boat that's going. Now, so, you know, if, if your hole is in the back but you're going fast enough, water will expand out at an appropriate amount. I said, but I feel like right now, my hole in my boat, is not in the back. I feel like it's in the front and the faster I go, the quicker it sinks. Ugh, March has not been a good month for me. I think uh, I did go from be losing $50 an hour before going down to Green Bay to losing like 40 some odd dollars an hour um, playing poker, you know, so we can still climb out of it. Don't get me wrong. It's only a couple grand we're down in March. Or maybe not. I know we're down, though. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes poker is just tough. Uh, this is not a glamorous profession uh, all the time. If you want to play poker for a living, you know, there's a couple of things that you definitely need. Hi, Logan. So this is Logan, everybody. He's my horse. He weighs about 135 pounds. Uh, we have four wiener dogs, and then he's a Catalua Shepherd Great Pyrenees mix. But um, <laughs> apparently you want to make the vlog, don't you, buddy? Um, uh, <laughs> Sometimes you just got to laugh, you know? Uh, if you're going to play, if you want to play poker for a living... Um, you know, there's a couple things you need to be able to do. Uh, you need to have really thick skin. Uh, you need to have a really good relationship with the other person in your life, or you need to be single. I know that sounds really weird, but it's one of those things when I coach my students about their spouses, uh, significant others, things like that, how supportive they are. Uh, how important it is you talk to your spouse or significant other about the decisions that you're going to make and the roller coaster rides and then some kind of like expectations. Like, for example, I'll be on a poker trip and Wayne and I will be driving somewhere and I'll get on the phone with Jolene, my wife, and I'll say, yeah, you know, I lost $3,000 last night, but I'm still up like $1,500 for the trip. 
yeah, yeah, okay, that's great. I'm glad you have that for dinner. Love you, bye. And hang up. Some relationships can handle that. Uh, on the other side, you know, Wayne looks at me and he's like, man, my wife could not handle that. He's like, like my wife just wants the end result at the end of the trip. She doesn't want the daily ups and downs. And normally I don't give my wife the daily up and downs, but you know, in that situation, I can't remember if it was a, I, yeah, it was the big pot that I lost with this grinders semi vlog within a vlog, if you will, is not supposed to be a hand history whatsoever. But when you guys see this, you might understand. This might be one that I think I'll probably remember for at least a few years. Let me know what you think. Uh, six, seven, nine, ten. Did not have this on video, but yeah, I had six, seven, nine, ten. Uh, there's a raise and a three bet. I four bet because I'm double suited and I'm in the small blind. So I'm either going to smash or pass the flop. So I four bet to like 325. We give three callers. And the flop comes six, eight, nine, Jan. We flop the nut straight with the redraw, so we go all in. And this guy thinks, and then he calls, and then the other players fold. And I was up against, this is so funny, I was up against ace, four, seven, seven. So he flops a gutter ball to the worst end of the straight that's no good and backdoor clubs because it was a complete rainbow. And the turn is an eight and the river is an eight. And I just laughed and said, sir, your full house is going to win. So sometimes as a grinder, you just have to laugh at that. But yeah, I was trying to explain that hand to my wife um, when we had that phone conversation and... It was kind of funny because uh, I started explaining. I said, well, honey, I had, and I said, it really doesn't matter what I say, does it? And she goes, no. I said, yeah, I lost $3,000 or whatever it was, a $3,000 pot. The other challenge is, is if you're in the midst of a downswing, you know, it's important to take time off. Uh, but if you're in the midst of a downswing, you feel compelled to go play more because you want to get out of the funk you're in. You have to balance that. You have to be like, no, no, I can take the day off. I know I'm in the midst of a downswing. I know sitting around playing video games is going to make me zero dollars. You know, I know all of these things. Yes. And, and if you know that, but sometimes it's important, you still have to recharge those batteries. Right, Logan? Yeah, maybe we'll go for a walk later on. Last night I played, I'm in the midst of a downswing. I'm literally down like... It's a stupid amount. I'm down like 8K online in the last like four or five weeks. It's really gross. So I lost $1,400 today, but sometimes look at these beautiful eggs. I'm like that right there, easily worth $5 for farm fresh eggs. So I guess I only lost $13.95 last night. Play smart, everybody. Run like a god.